Welcome to Pocket Watch Podcast. I'm Zach. Cruz. Jake. And we're fucking Pocket Watch Podcast. Yes, yes sir. Laugh at us or learn with us. We're here to grow. And That's growing, we're fucking doing, man. Pocket Watch Podcast. It's your boys. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you for tuning in another week. Make sure you like, follow, share, subscribe, and tell your sister, tell your mother, brothers, father. Yo, tell <laughs> Jarvis. Yo, we got a we got another guest. I don't know if you see him to my left or to my right. It's a Zoom episode. We had technical difficulties before the freaking podcast. You know, it's just <laughs> it's the struggles, man. But to my right or to my left, we got Connor Jarvis, fitness business coach, right? Uh, showing personal trainers how to build an online business, making 10k a month, 60, 50k a month within six months. He said, "I don't even want to deal with the fat people. I'd rather deal with the trainers, so I can make them money." Uh, it's good stuff. It's interesting too, because we also we also want to you know learn some fitness shit too. But thank you for joining us, bro. Give yeah, him, give him a round of applause. Awesome. Do you hear our sound effects? <laughs> what was that? Do you hear our sound effects? I don't know. I wish uh, I bro, you there's music and applause going on for you right now. Like <laughs> you can't even you can't even appreciate. It. What's you, up, man? You don't you don't hear the music? No, no, I don't. Bro, I'll, I'll start clapping myself. That's fine. Let, that is it. interesting. <laughs> let's hear it, bro. <laughs> that is interesting. I'm surprised you don't. You should be, but never mind. That's fine though. I guess. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in again. Like I said, we got a guest, Connor, my man. Thank you for joining us, bro. Joining us out of. Uh, Virginia, so right outside of D.C. Hey, let's go. Nice. Let's go. And, con- you know, <laughs> respect to Connor because this is, this is a businessman, right? This is a busy man. This guy is so much about his time that he has a microphone and a freaking camera that's better than ours <laughs> as a guest <laughs> appearance, bro. Yo, this is our best Zoom episode ever. Thank you so much for that, bro. going to be the best one you get. That's what I'm talking about, man. All right, so <laughs> what's up, bro? You look, how, look, how did you start, all right? Because you're a fitness business coach, right? So yeah. uh, if I'm on Instagram, if I'm on, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of platforms, a lot of, you know, buddies that we have that, that are, you know, in the gym a lot, they're fitness coaches and stuff, uh, easy, good content to make. But, like, yours is slightly different because it's kind of, like, geared towards the actual fitness coaches, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I used to be a fitness coach myself. Like I was working at a gym. So this is a few years back. I, uh, I grew up in New Jersey. So like Jersey shore all the way right next to seaside Heights with, you know, Snooki, all those people. <laughs> um, Ronnie was my best. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, um, so I grew up in the shore area and I worked as a personal trainer. I was working in a gym for years and man, I was getting paid fucking like $12 an hour. Uh, for Damn. working just barely I was barely filling up my car with like gas I could barely afford to eat and um, I wasn't even paying rent at this point so I was still living with my parents mm-hmm. but um, I was I was working in the gym and I came across an ad online it, it was a uh, it was one of these guys like yeah make 10k a month in your fitness business and start your online fitness business I was bullshit like, no I was just playing it's got it's got it's like this is a scam yeah for sure yeah so I was like I'm curious all right let me, let me just click the link let me just click the link real quick um, went on the link, piqued my interest, and I was like, fuck it. I'm barely making money anyway. Let me just book a call. And on the call, like I saw all these testimonials. They said, all right, this is what we're going to do, this, this, this. Your first month, they're going to bring in like $5,000. I'm like, I've never seen $5,000 in my life. Um, and they're like, yeah, you're going to be an overnight success. Uh, then they hit me with, it's a $16,000 mentorship. Damn. I was like, I got $1,000 like to my name. So, and they're like, cool, put it down. And I took out a 16K loan in order to get it started. So I'm negative 15K, just left my job at working at a gym at Crunch Fitness in Toms River, New Jersey. And and the shit you not, man, within my first 28 days, I brought in over $10,000 in my fitness business. Wow. Like cash, not revenue, cash collected in my business. Um, I have videos of me like breaking down crying. I'm like, this is great. This is amazing. Um, and then uh, I hit a few low months where I wasn't doing great in my business, but uh, I really 
it was cr- it was fucking life changing because I was coming from a place making twelve dollars an hour, but I didn't know how to market myself. I didn't know how to stand out because like I don't know if you guys worked in a gym or like seen trainers in a gym. They just stand there, and if they look good, man, they get all the clients. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, if you're a fat yeah. trainer, you're fucked. Yeah. But if you're a good-looking trainer. It's true. <laughs> it's yeah, like, fuck like, off. <laughs> I can do know, what I want. If you're a barber, dude, if you're a barber and you got, you know, half a half a head of hair, like, you're screwed. Yeah, you're balding so, and shit like that. Yeah. It's terrible. But I didn't know how to market myself and stand out. So I really struggled with, you know, kind of branding myself and being known as, like, the guy to go to online for weight loss. Cause that was my, that was my industry. So 60 days after that, I hired another mentor. Cause I was like, this shit works. This is cr- I've never invested in myself in my life. Like I'm, I'm still in the military, actually air force reserves. So I work uh, one week at a month and I've been through college. I dropped out my third year. I didn't really like it. I didn't learn anything. I was like, I, I learned how to take uh, blood pressure. That was, that was it. Mm. Everything else I kind of already knew. So uh, 60 days after I started my business, I scaled it up to $30,000 a month. And then from there, I was like, this shit is fucking great. <clears throat> um, and during that time, like I was helping other trainers in like the groups I was in because they weren't getting the help they needed um, because like the groups that I were in, they were like group coaching. They didn't have one-on-one personal like touch, you had a question, you gotta wait until Monday to ask a question in like a group of forty people. Um, it kind of sucked, and I was kind of just helping people on the side because I was getting great results. And they're like, "Dude, we should have paid you." It's like you still can't. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so that's when I really like took off with this business I'm running right now, which is like I'm helping in-person trainers or any online trainers who are struggling right now to build their brand, grow their online fitness business and charge what they're fucking worth. Like really, Mm. because a lot of people they're used to charging like $50 a session. You you're saving people's lives. You're curing obesity, right? You're reducing heart risk. You're are heart failures, Mm -hmm. heart related uh, death. You think that's worth more than $50 a session, right? It's like a lot more. So yeah, like that's that's what I want to do right now. And right now I have students hitting ten K months. Um I just got a text from my one student, Kyle. He uh, just hit his twelfth client at twelve hundred bucks within the first few weeks. Damn. So this Damn. is um this is what I love to do, man. I get fired up. I get pumped when I talk about this stuff. Damn so uh how old are you? I'm twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. Damn. So that all right, so like we're like twenty seven or whatever. So so you're saying uh, you were in the Air Force? Thank you for your service, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The only deployment I went to was uh, down in, in Miami. So don't, oh, don't do so you went through the worst, bro. You went through the worst of it. That's <laughs> I know that shit was that's hot. a whole that's a whole war zone itself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. Nah, that's cool, bro. In Miami, you just gotta fight your morals. That's the only thing. What you're did you go to there. school for? You said you were, you went to school. You didn't learn nothing. What did you go to school for? I went to school for. First, it was criminal justice. Then I switched out into health and ex- health and exercise science. And at that point, like you got a few routes when you go in that education um, or in that in that major. The first ones, like you could be a physician assistant, you could be, um, you know, a chiropractor if you wanted to. You can be, um, you can go the doctoral route. Like none of that really interested me at all. I just it took me three years to realize I just hated school. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I, I was in a frat like I partied, you know, from 18 to like 22. I was drinking every other night and like I was living the college life, but I wasn't going for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. And um, I just woke up one day and I was like, COVID happened. I was like, I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't like doing this. So honestly, like if it wasn't for COVID, I wouldn't be here. I'd Damn. still be in school. I'd be, <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd still be working at a job that I fucking hated waking up and like going to work in a building that I didn't like, didn't want to be in. And um, I don't know if I'd ever be an entrepreneur. I didn't have any entrepreneurial tendencies when I was growing up. I kind of like, you know, was raised in a traditional home, go get a good job, get good grades, graduate, get a good paying salary and like just live your life and then die, I guess. Um, So now that I'm looking back, I like, I wish I started the year sooner. Yeah, bro. Yo, it's funny because 
So many guests that we've had that made a pivot during COVID. It's ridiculous, bro. Yeah, yeah like, it's definitely a trend that we have on Yeah, here. it's like, it's ridiculous, man. But that's that's super cool, bro. Uh, what, so, like, on the course, and during COVID, so you started doing fitness first, and then you started doing fitness coaching, or what? So I was working at the gym for since I was, like, 18 years old. Mm. So I started working at the front desk. Then the owner came in, and he's like, because I was, like, competing at the time. I was fucking sauced up but the owner came in and he was like um he's like hey what are you doing behind the aren't you supposed to be behind the pt desk i was like oh no no i'm I'm front desk he goes you're not a trainer like no not really and then he goes we'll get you certified got me certified and then you know i started working and training people but i was still going to school so i was only working like the summers and winters um and i was training people on the side at my school just you know here and there for free to get some experience and i already worked out so just trained them for free and then when I wasn't in school, I was working at the gym training. Hmm. Then COVID hit, and then like all the gyms shut down. It's like, damn, I don't have any income. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. damn. So that's kind of where I made the switch. Yeah, it's weird because like you make it sound so easy, right? I mean, because oh. like you know the services you provide, your program now makes it a little easier because you went through it, right? So it's like, hey, if you're a fitness coach, whatever the case is, here's this blueprint or whatever, but. From the inception, like from when you started, you made it sound really easy, right? Where it's like, well, I was doing a lot of fitness stuff and then, you know, uh, I just started telling people, you know, like, like charge the value that you're worth, you know, this and that. But what people don't get and what I think is interesting with you, because I'm sure like even with podcasts, right? You start a podcast and then you start seeing how many freaking podcasts are out there or whatever, right? But uh, starting a business for fitness coaching I feel like people don't realize how hard that is. I mean, I haven't seen that many people do it. You're the first account, you know, first person I met that that I've seen do that. And it's like social media presence, a must. Business mindset, a must. And then the fitness part. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a its own separate industry. Yeah. But, like, the social media and business part of it is, like, first and foremost. Otherwise, nobody knows who you are, right? You don't have no clientele, right? Like, how many clients do you get right now that you're doing a Zoom call like this? So I have currently enrolled about 42 people in my program. I'm running the whole thing. Um, I just brought on a client success manager. He's He currently, last year, he was he did quarter mil in his fitness business. So he's stepping in. And I, I helped him with his business as well. And um, we're both in the same uh, partner mentorship. And we're going down to Fort Lauderdale together for the mastermind. So... Uh, we recently just partnered up, and he's taken on a few sales calls for me, which is uh, really, really cool because, like, that's how you grow. That's how you grow a successful business is um, mm-hmm. you don't be a full-time entrepreneur. Like, going from full-time job to full-time entrepreneur, you have to take yourself out of the trenches. <laughs> and even with trainers online who do have their businesses, like, they're working full-time in their businesses, and they're not able to scale past that because – you can't do everything yeah. like as much as you want to, you just physically can't and then be better. So that's, that's kind of like the second back half of what I help people do is like, take yourself out of the business, let other people grow it for you and then actually live the life that you started your business to live. It's called the like, fishing test. To- yeah. What's the fishing yeah. test? The fishing test means like, are you able to up and leave your business and go fishing for seven days and, and be able to still make money? Mm. If you can't, you're not a you're not a business owner. Or go golfing. You're an employee of your business. The you're golfing. Golf. Yeah, I'm not seven days yet. I'm not there quite yet, but I'm still on the <laughs> golf course answering phone calls. But yes, <laughs> nonetheless, we're working there, bro. Zach's our entrepreneur, but I think it's interesting for you, bro, because um, like I find I see myself very similar. Like I don't have any entrepreneur tendencies or anything like that. But it is kind of interesting because you didn't go to school for business or nothing like that. But it was interesting when you were saying like. You know, 10K, uh, 10K cash profit, right? Not revenue and stuff like that. And I was like, ah, okay. Like, you know, those are like little things. And then uh, some of these ways to grow, ways to scale. Uh, so where do you think you got those business tendencies or that business mindset? Honestly, man, just being in the military. Yeah. Like, I, th- I think that's what really pushed me towards the entrepreneurial, I guess, game because like when I was on act, because I was on active duty orders for COVID, for obviously down in Florida, um, I was working at my base while my unit was over in Afghanistan. So 
just waking up and going to a place that I, I like did not like it. I hated it. Yeah. I'm still in now just doing part time because benefits are nice. Like, yeah. Not lie. <laughs> um, but like just doing that and working for somebody, not having a say of what I wanted to do or how much I can make, it just felt like I was in a prison. And like it came to a point where I got so depressed and I got so mentally not okay that I just like did not care if there's a point like no lie, I stopped putting my seatbelt on when I was driving to work. Mm. And I was like, I just don't care. Um, and it was at that point I was like, Yeah, I probably shouldn't be doing this anymore. So then COVID happened and I was like, you know, I got this ad thrown in my face and it just made sense. Mm-hmm. You know? So I said, you know what, if I'm if I'm gonna take a chance on this school, if I'm gonna take a chance on the military, I might as well just take a chance on myself and and actually do something for me. So that's that's what I did. And honestly, man, I, I wish I did a year sooner. I just didn't know. And that's what I'm wanting to do with other people to help them through what I used from what I was going through. Yeah. And that's that's pretty much my whole goal here. Yeah, that's like that's like a market I never really thought of, right? Because it's like when you think of businesses, you got to tap a market that most people aren't thinking of. And I think a lot of people that are in the fitness industry or whatever, the first thought is, let me be a fitness coach. Right. And like, I'm good at this. You know, I look good, whatever. I could get the clients. Um, and I think most people kind of stop even there when they say like even thinking about getting into that, they go, well, like there's it's saturated. There's so many people doing this fitness coach thing or whatever. The cool thing is like, yeah, there is so many people doing this fitness coach thing. Why not start a business of how to do it right? Right? Or or how to yeah. do this, like how to take that to the next level. So, d- A, what is without, you know, without giving game that we don't that we have to pay for, right? <laughs> but A, dude, I I dude, I give game either way. Like I'm not going to hold hold back the secrets. Like the secrets are out there. But it's just like fitness, man. You're not going to give away the one golden workout, the one golden nutrition plan because, dude, people are still going to be fat and lazy. Like mm-hmm. that's not that's not the Regardless, secret. Yep. The secret is implementation, Discipline, right? Yeah. Sell the knowledge, or or give away the knowledge, sell the implementation, and that's that's pretty much what it comes down to. So I give game away for free all day. That's fine. So no one's going to use it though. I guess what is like so a I, so I saw um I saw one of the clips that you got where you're kind of like having like a annoying ass business call right like how many people waste your time bro like how many people because you know what's funny when you dm'd us like yo not to rush you but like i got another meeting i was like damn we're about to be on his reel we're gonna be the next <laughs> reel for him bro because his reel was him like somebody like yo i want to do this i want to do that this and that but not really get into like the business part of it right uh-huh. and is and pretty much just trying to juice some game and just trying to talk with him or whatever but how many of those interactions do you have Honestly, not a lot because I qualify heavy in the DMs. Like I have a setter in my inbox doing a lot of the qualifications. I have an application that they fill out to get on my calendar. Like, because again, as a business owner, the biggest, and as you grow, like the biggest thing you have to protect is your time. Yeah. Because again, that's, that's the thing you can't get back no matter how much money you make. Um, and I want to protect my time right now because if I don't, like I'm going to waste it all on, you know, WOTs. You know what WOTs are? Waste, waste of time. <laughs> waste of time. That's waste fire, time, man. You don't, want, you don't want those on your calendar. So um, I make the application process like super strict. Uh, apparently, he slipped through. So you know, it, it doesn't happen too often. But when it does, it it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking too. So you were when were you in this? You were in school while you were in the service, or you went to the service after you yeah. were in school? I went. I went into the Air Force right when I graduated high school. So. The summer I graduated high school, I went right to boot camp. And then from there, I um, I took a year off. So all my friends went to school. I took a year off. I went to training. And uh, I was in training for a whole year down in Texas. And, um, yeah, I just took a year off. And they paid for my school. So that's kind of, like, why I did it. I wasn't really interested in joining the military. But I was like, if they're going to pay my school, like, I might as well just do it. Bro, you were, like, one of the biggest, like, good examples of why – the, because it sounds you know, I know you hated your you know your time like you were figuring out what you really wanted to do right. So that's part of it. But also, like you were saying too, like you partied eighteen through twenty two. You know what I mean? And for free schooling th- via military X Y Z, right? 
And then now even starting your own business, making good money, doing, you know, successful business or whatever, and still working here and there with, for the service and, and getting the benefits or whatever. It's like, man, that's a that's a great yeah, setup, bro. Like, that's a good way of, you know, putting some time in with, you know, with the service and getting the benefits, but not all your time, right? Yeah, I mean... I'm I'm not a religious person at all, but I I firmly believe like everything happens for a reason. Like where where we are right now, like where you guys are right now, where I'm at right now, all my clients, everyone else in the world, like you should be here. But in the future, like you have the ability to change your path, and you don't really know when that's going to happen. I think that's like a beautiful thing of life, but it's also it's kind of scary because you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Yeah. So. I don't know. Would I be here if I didn't take all the necessary steps? If I didn't take the sacrifices, you know, lose, lose something, give something up. I don't know. I don't know where I'd be if I didn't take the necessary steps to get here. And uh, it, it's crazy to think about because just one small change. If I didn't go to the military, maybe I wouldn't be here. Right. Maybe I wouldn't be, you know, with with my girlfriend, which I love her to death. And like, you know, yeah, think, life is crazy, man. And yeah. uh, I've I've learned that. My 25-year-old self is going to sound stupid compared to my 75, 80-year-old self. Damn right. And that person's going to tell me to slow down and just enjoy it because I know that person's going to want to spend all the money in the world to be 25 again. So knowing that right now, I want to really, again, like focus on getting my time back, focus on the people around me, and just making sure that I only enjoy this this life. Because, again, like you only get one. Um, make it count. Mm-hmm. So. I wish I knew this years ago, which in hindsight would have been great, but you know, we don't know what we don't know. Yeah, man. I mean, you talk about, I, I think like when I see people partying all the time, like there is a slight difference between like, like you could tell when somebody's really wasting away their life partying, but I do think, and you tell me, but like, Cause you're you're also a salesman, and even every entrepreneur is a salesman, right? Like you're selling your business, you're selling your service, whatever the case is. Dude, you sell every day, no matter if you're selling a product or not. You ask your girlfriend where do you want to go to eat, like you're selling. Yeah, dude, yeah. Dude, life is sales. How much do you attribute like that type? Because I think I think it feels like a lot of the you know flip the switch, like a lot of the discipline and the entrepreneurship did come from like your time with the service and whatever the case is. But like on the salesman side. I think partying and stuff and like mixing it up every night or whatever. Like, what do you think? Like, you think you got a lot of like, it's a different type of wisdom being out in the, in the trenches, you know, even though it's like not really benefiting your life, but you are doing a lot of interactions and like new people meeting this or that, you know, like there's a benefit to that. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I've never read a sales book like at all. I've never picked one up. I don't think I ever will. I mean, I will. I mean, I'll, I'll buy like Grant Cardone's Sell or Be Sold, but um, selling is is all about the transference of belief from one person to another. That's all sales is. Like closing is when you hop on the sales call and ask for the money. Um, selling, I've I've attributed a lot to just experience, whether good or bad. Because if you can relate to somebody, and again, like partying, drinking, I was I grew I didn't grow up, but. Um, I grew up around older people because my sister was 13 years. She's still 13 years older than me. And um, she had parties like every weekend at our house. So I was like that awkward eight-year-old just like standing in the corner watching everyone drinking. Like looking at titties. um, (laughs) (laughs) I was like, that's weird. That's not what But um, um, so Did yours have milk too? (laughs) No. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, like because – Sales doesn't come naturally for some people because they just haven't had the experience, um, which I've been blessed to have the experiences that other people can't with both military, you know, discipline, um, just getting put through the ringer, right? <laughs> just in every aspect in life. So um, I would attribute it a lot to, yeah, military, just like what I've been through and what I've what I've seen. Dope. Definitely. Yeah. At this point, because you've been doing the business for about like three years now, right? Yeah. Uh, do you feel like most of the game that you're given is like fitness related or business related? I think it's business because it all boils down to the same stuff. Um, if it's fitness, you know, 
selling knives, whatever you want to do, like it all boils down to a getting yourself out there, branding yourself. How do you stand out? How do you market compared to other people? How do you differentiate yourself? And then how do you fulfill? So the same business components are the same with any business you do online, in person. It's all the same stuff. Um, you just change out the product. Mm-hmm. And that's that's all it really is. And it took me a long time to really th- like realize that because in my fitness, I was like, well, I'm the most shredded. So everyone has to work with me. It's like, no one gives a fuck. Yeah. Like, they really don't. They don't. Everyone's selfish. They only care about themselves. Help them instead of helping yourself. So I guess the sooner I learned that, the sooner I was able to, A, help more people, but B, make more. Yeah. Right. And you only make more when you help others more. Yeah, you're selling the value. It's like, what do you get from this? Or whatever the case is, right? So it's like, sure, I'll come to you because you're shredded, but if you're not showing me that value or you're not making me feel some type of, you know, some type of gratification or whatever out of this experience, then I'm not coming back to you or whatever. You could be like the the most shredded guy on the planet, but if you can't do two plus two and like talk to somebody, you're fucked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you rather have like a fitness coach like no fitness coach. Would you rather have somebody that's trying to start, you know, trying to be a, a trying to be a fitness coach that has immense amount of the business knowledge but not so much fitness knowledge or a lot of the fitness knowledge not so much business knowledge? Mm, okay. That's a good question. So I can only talk about like my experience. So I knew nothing about business. Never had a business class. Never, I didn't know what inbound versus outbound marketing meant. I had no idea what all that shit meant. Um, what is inbound and outbound marketing? So inbound <laughs> is direct. So people coming to you. Outbound is you going to them. Okay. So like when you run paid advertising, they're coming to you. Inbound, when yeah. you reach out to people, cold DMs, cold outbound. call, that's outbound. Okay. So you're reaching out to them. Got you, got you, got you. Um, both very, very effective, given you do them right. I know there are a lot of people online, they're like, outbound doesn't work. Yeah. Inbound's the only way. It's like, they both work. It yeah. just depends on how much you want them to work. Um, I would say the person who can best understand the market always wins. If it's their fitness, you know, doctors, chiropractors, whoever you are selling to, if you understand the person you're selling to, you always win. Right. If that's your understanding, their problems their pain points, um, their day to day life, like what that looks like. If you can relate to them and understand and then provide a solution, you always win. So if that's someone who's more attuned to fitness than business. Right. Anyone can learn both of them. Yeah. Right. Those are two skills that you can you can acquire and no one can take away from you. Personally, I mean, for me, I would rather be good at the craft and then have someone else teach me how to market. Because if you suck at the craft and you're trying to market it, like you're not going to have a good product because you just don't understand what that person needs. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting too cuz that I feel like that applies to a lot cuz even in like corporate world, whatever the case is, it's like the people that are good with people succeed regardless of what position they have or talent that they have. And then there's you see so many people that are super talented, super specialists, but they're so bad with people, and they're just, like, capped at a certain point, you know? And there's pros and cons to both ways, but yeah. that shit applies everywhere. It's kind of like what you're saying is I'd rather have a client or somebody come to me that knows how to relate to people and work with people and stuff, and I could teach them fitness and business. Yeah. But if they could do mm-hmm. that, I could, I could do anything. Isn't it fucking funny, like, how many people try to, like, get good at stuff, but if you're missing that, you're kind of, like... In, in in all aspects, bro. Like it's kind of crazy. Like it's like w- working on being good with people is one like the best skill you could have in the world, right? Like, what's the yeah. difference between Cardone and a motherfucker that is running a multi millionaire business, right? That you don't know his name, you know? And it's like there's actually a really good book that I actually just started reading. Like I haven't even gotten too far into, it, but it's actually interesting. It's called um, How to Win and Influence People, or something like that. And so far, it's an interesting book. It talks Important, about like, like how to like speak and how to like influence people to to do things or move in the way that you kind of want them to without asking them. It just state that you speak to them in certain ways to make them want to do it. It's important, man. I was just talking to one of my buddies about somebody like at his job, and he was saying like 
you know, there's a guy that's better than his boss at 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 IT, right? And I was like, yeah, but he was like, you know, but the the chiefs, you know, the CEO, COO, CFOs will never put that guy to manage a team because it, that shit will go to the ground, you know. But the boss is good with people. Like he comes, he'll bring gifts. He he like jokes around with the guys or whatever. But he also pushes them and stuff. But like technically. He's he's not as good as a lot of people on his team or whatever the case is. And you got you got to have balance of it all though. Yeah, man. A, the importance is balance because, like for his situation, you know, you can have if you don't have the craft, but you have the marketing skills, you can bring people in, but you're going to lose them because you don't have the craft to teach them yeah. and be able to retain them, and not especially with referrals, you're going to lose your referrals if you're not doing if your craft isn't as good to be able to bring people in. But if your craft is so good. That's going to bring you clients, but it might not be enough for you. That's why you got to have that balance. In Even there. with Connor, right? It's like. uh he can't do what he does if he's not good with people. Absolutely. He turned yeah. his yeah. business, he turned his money making powers from fitness knowledge to business knowledge. And now I'm just dealing with people. Like st- strictly yeah. working with people to yeah. try to believe in me and influence so you could join the program and stuff like that. It's it's interesting. And that's the next level. That's the you know what I mean? Like it's like, you know, a lot of your clients wish they had clients. Like that's the next level. Like that's the next thing to do. It's like, wow, that's interesting, bro. Man. Yeah. And and like the biggest skill that I've learned, I'm still learning. I'm not the best at, at all of this at all. Like I'm always always going to be a student of this craft. I'm never going to be the best. And I think I could be comfortable with saying that but the best storyteller is the winner if mm-hmm. you can accurately tell a story and vision and have people visualize the story you're telling and then paint a picture in their head for them you will always win and that's with fitness that's with business that's with selling fucking cut go knives like you will always win if you can help them visualize the end outcome or the end goal like that's that's the secret in sales yeah, yeah, that's a secret, man. That seems like the secret in life, man. Yeah, I, cause I, I've been going through something similar where I feel like I've been getting pressures to like become more technical in my craft, but um, I'm also like trying to let my bosses or higher ups know, like, hey, these these qualitative things that I'm doing as well, like that you can't see, like in business, uh, like in court court corporate worlds or whatever they call it like organizational organizational citizenship behavior or whatever meaning like um the people that that score the highest on organization citizenship behavior meaning like they'll help people out they don't even though it's not their task they'll help people they'll train like even though it's not their job to train like they do these things or whatever they always get better reviews higher you know uh higher pays and stuff like that versus the ones that are just better at their job or whatever the case is and it's like a weird phenomenon because it's not so quantitative it's not something people can measure like yo you yeah. brought in x amount dollars, you know there's yeah. jobs yeah. like that if you're in sales you don't sell shit you're not making money but like in in some other things those values are so qualitative it's hard for a manager or whoever to like really measure that and put it on a review but they had surveys asking about that characteristic specifically. And the managers were always like, you know what? Like that is why this person is always succeeding or whatever the case is, even though they are not the best at their job or whatever. It's like, man, that's a, it's a little gem there, bro. It's a little gem, man. So are you forgetting about fitness stuff, man? <laughs> are you getting rusty, bro? <laughs> Am I what? Are you getting rusty in the fitness world? Oh, are you selling fitness? No, selling fitness I know you're good at. But, like, it, how many of your clients actually ask you for tips about, like, what to do with their clients and stuff like that? Oh, all the time. Really? Yeah, all the time. Oh, definitely. Because online training is a lot different than in-person training. Like, the, the one of the benefits of online training is that you don't have to be in person. You don't have to, like, trade your time for money pretty much like a prostitute. Um, like, you're trading your time for money. If yeah. you're training in person, you're you're capped at how many hours you can work. You're capped at the location that you have to show up at, and again, like you don't get paid if the client doesn't show. Yeah. So now you drove all the way here, spent the gas money, spent the time for someone who texted you two minutes late and said, "Hey, not showing up today." What Online asshole. training, like, dude, it sucks. Like, it's the worst thing ever. Because I lived like two minutes away from my gym, thankfully, but like <laughs> people drive thirty minutes, forty five minutes to work, and then they get there. You know, fucking Susan texting them saying, hey, uh, yeah, Debbie is sick, not going to be able to make it. Or 
I ate too much. I'm hungover. Gonna push it off. And then you're just sitting there like, you know, fuck my life. Damn. But, I'm still gonna fucking invoice you, bitch. <laughs> yo, that's a, yeah, that's, if you're working for like crunch fitness, retro fitness, good luck. <laughs> that ain't happening. Oh, they won't let you but, do uh, that? No way. No, because they, they signed an agreement with the gym and you're just the person there that helps them. Mm. So you're the middleman. Like, you get paid. Dude, the margins on what I got paid were dog shit. I got 20% of what the client paid the gym. So typically, like, an in-person session ranges from, like, 60 bucks. So you're getting paid, like, not even 20 bucks, mm-hmm. Like, 30% maybe. I was making $20 an hour if a client showed up. But if I wasn't, it was making it was twelve dollars an hour just full four times. So, like the the waste of time. Like again, talking to people, understanding the craft, helping them, and then helping how to learning how to talk to them. Yeah, so that's that's where where the real skill comes from. Yeah, I think I think people that get good at being a fitness coach when they're really good, it's funny because I think the next step that they think about is starting their own gym. Not a lot of people yeah, think yeah. about starting a business of facilitating a yeah. good a good uh, fitness coach, you know, network in whatever the case is. And what I think that difference comes to is social media knowledge, social media presence, right? Because if I'm good at what I do, but I'm not confident in the social media world, I can start my own gym and all I got to do is push locally so I could get local people to come in. And then now I'm not eating 20. I'm not just getting the 20 percent. I'm getting the 100 percent and I'm paying the 20 percent to those facilitating all the you know people coming to my gym or whatever. You got a lot of game yeah. on your on your, you know, follow what is, uh, Connor, Connor underscore. What's your social again? Connor dot Jarvie. It'll, be on, it'll be on the screen. Yeah, it'll be down there. Connor dot Jarvie. Follow him. It's great. It's a great follow. Great clips. Everything. Very good at social media. So um, did you think about starting a gym or were you just kind of always kind of yeah. good at yeah. social media? When I, was, um, when I was in school, one of our projects. Oh, sorry. Um, when I was in school in health and exercise science, one of our projects was to like, hey, you're starting a gym. Where do you want to start it? What's your market? And like kind of like an intro to marketing. Um, and I, I worked with my buddy. I follow him on Instagram right now. He actually did start up his gym. But for the longest time, I was like, I want to have my own place. I want to have my own location. And looking back at it now, like I'm so thankful I fucking didn't because – it is a money pit. Yeah, bro. it is such a money pit because if you don't pick the right location, if you don't have the right crowd, like if you don't have the right brand, it's there's so much that can go wrong. Like you're you're gonna have to market anyway, but like you still limit yourself to that of surrounding population. Like you can't market to people in California, New Jersey, Maine, Texas. Like you're stuck with these people, and that's your that's your cat. Location like you, is you everything. Well, online training. You could always do like a yeah. hybrid method too, though, no? Yeah, but not for that fixed cost yeah. of the gym you yeah, bought. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because like now, instead of just running your own business with virtually zero overhead, now you have rent, you have air conditioning, you have insurance, you have trainers, employees, you have uh, fucking like, you know, pesticide guys come in cleaning every month. Like you have so much overhead and yeah. so much that you have to go under for it's just not worth it well, who needs ac in the gym bro <laughs> yeah. i think i hate Ain't when no ac i hate when AC in the gym, i hate when gyms are cold bro that's like the worst thing ever. That's one thing I love about Mike Lockley's gym, bro. He ain't put AC in that bitch. That bitch was 90 degrees. Hot. And he tell you, you're going to sweat that shit out. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't bro. like cold gyms, bro. When no. I'm fucking running, I don't want to be fucking stopping, be freezing when I'm going to the fucking weights. I hate that, bro. I want to I want to stay warm. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, that's just me. And when you think about just like, because cause even like the start of your story, right? Taking out $16,000 loan, like that's a lot. But then like turning it into 10K, 30K a month or whatever the case is. And it's like that is way better than starting a gym because the the loan you gotta take out to start a gym and then until you can see some profits for the, those fixed costs that you that you're incurring at that moment, it's like, man, I wonder why people don't do it more. How now that you're in the space and you're in the industry, how many people do what you do? Is there a lot of people that do what you do? Yeah, there's a handful, and um, it's funny because like every time I talk to a client or or talk to somebody on the phone or in the DMs, they're like. Well, you're like the sixth person I've seen doing this. And I'm like, 
yeah, because the shit works. Like mm-hmm. the shit's, it's 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 a very good <laughs> business model. However, the problem with the online space is that people will buy a course of how to start your online fitness business, not do it, or do it very fucking poorly fail at it and then they're like oh i get it i'm a failed fitness coach online so i'm just gonna resell this information slap my logo on it and then have no in-depth knowledge of Mm. what i'm actually teaching but then charge like 10 times the price and then kind of just trick people into buying my products and then you know that's that's what i see a lot right now and it sucks because like people are spending their hard-earned money their life savings in my case on Mm -hmm. people who have never fucking done what they are teaching how to do and it's it sucks like that's the online space right now but um that's why i always like i'm a personal brand i'm not a huge company um right now i like that because i'm one-on-one with all my students so like i've actually done it like i've built my to like six figures in my first year of online fitness coaching and like other people are just selling one package and they're like oh this works i'm gonna go resell this and it sucks to see, but a lot of people get burnt that I talk to. Wait, so you're also telling people to coach online? Like, is that part, part of the method? No. So, like, if you are – if you, I, I help in-person trainers, but I also help people who want to just start up their online fitness business. I have construction workers, uh, people in you know financing, accounting, starting up. Like, people just have a genuine passion for fitness and want to help others and want to like leave their nine to five, that's the market I help. Um, as far as like them starting up their own consulting company. I think, I think zoom just froze. Connor. <laughs> Connor. Better. Yo, are you there? Wait, are you locked? Yeah. Yo, are you there? No, we're good. Nope. Okay. Yeah. We, we just lost you for a second. Wait, you, wait, you, wait. you were saying that you also do uh, the online stuff with, um, with, construction and stuff like that yeah so a lot of my i have two clients who are three actually in construction and contracting um they love fitness so they reached out to me and helped and wanted to start their business i was like yeah sure because they want to leave their nine to five jobs and have that freedom work wherever you want in the world train people like dude i closed a three thousand dollar fitness that's when i knew like this shit's great yeah you closed a three thousand dollar business. What? <laughs> I closed a um a three thousand dollar fitness plan when I was hiking in Hawaii. Wow! Me and my girlfriend went, Damn. Um, I was on top of the mountain, finished a, a sales call, hung the phone up, and then we were just watching. Like, it's it's on my uh, Instagram somewhere down below. But um, you can you can do business wherever you want. All right, and that's that's one of the coolest things. So, what is your? Let's just say this. What is your top social media? Gem, business. Well, you gave business gem, social media gem, and fitness gem that you would give to people, uh, regardless of whatever type of you know online or whatever in person service that they're trying to give. Not number social one, social media, but what you're willing um, to give. <laughs> I'll, I'll, dude, I'll give the whole farm away. I don't care. People aren't are still not going to do it. Um, social media gem, I would say like. There are a few things I could say. There's not one like best thing. But I would say don't copy people because you're always guaranteeing you're going to be the second version. Yep. Um, and also don't be fucking boring with whatever you do. <laughs> Eyeballs are hard to attack, or yeah. hard to attract. Yeah. And they're even harder to attain and like keep on your content. If you are boring, if you're just like bland old fucking milk toast, like you're not going to succeed with whatever you do. Yeah. If, if you stay middle of the road, you're guaranteed to fail. Like when you look at it, not to get fucking political, but when you look at like uh, political parties, they're on both sides. Like the is in for you. Same thing with like Liver King and all these very, very, um, you know, sensational characters. They're so over the top, but that's what people like. And that's what pays. That's what keeps so, the attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, if you're down the middle, like, these are the fucking three foods you need to eat to lose 10 pounds. It's like, stop. That's no one cares. 15th reel I've seen that way or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Everybody says it's different like, shit. A, <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm asleep by the first first word you say. 
Yeah, it's a little right. bit of like the scroll test, right? Like all these people that you're talking about, like wherever you know, wherever the instance is that they are first seen, is really the scroll test. It's like I'm I'm flipping channels. What is the five seconds that keeps me on this channel, right? And then that's what just explodes. That's the thing that keeps people yeah. to this. Yo, have you heard of this person? Have you heard of this person? Otherwise, you're just still flipping. You're still scrolling. You're still making it through. Like, that's something, like, even with this podcast we talk about, it's like, how? hey, man, like, let's not hold back. I know because people like starting a podcast, but not everybody likes to say some crazy shit or, like, not, you know, or sound like they're just saying crazy shit for the fun of saying crazy shit, right? Like, there's a lot of yeah. nuances in this or whatever. But, no, man, that's facts. That's That's... That's very true, Also, bro. like, if you want to put an equation on it, Instagram algorithm is always changing. There's not one best thing to, to boost yourself in the algorithm. But what I found, and this has worked very well for me, is to increase your reach, to get more views on your videos, on your profile, your stories. It's your CTR multiplied by your watch time. What's so CTR? Click rate, oh, okay. Click-through rate and watch time. The amount of people clicking on your videos... And this is based on your headline, your first uh, cover photo for your reels. Like, what's going to attract people? When you look at a newspaper, no one fucking reads the article. Everyone reads the headline. Yep. And they're like, oh, did you hear about this? And then, like, 17 paragraphs down, you realize the headline was just fake. Fucking yep. bait, um, yeah. It was just bait. But the headline sells, right? You spend your first 80 cents on your dollar in the first headline. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the 80 cents of your whole dollar in marketing. Everything else after that is just filler multiplied by how many people are staying watching your video reel, your carousel. If you have multiple slides, because Instagram favors people who keep them on their platform, right? Because you got to think like there's TikTok, Facebook uh, shorts, YouTube shorts, like they're all vi- they're all fighting for the same eyeballs. Mm-hmm. So and Instagram specifically, and I imagine like all these other platforms, if your video reel, uh, carousel keeps people on their platform for longer they're gonna push you out no matter how shitty of a video it is yeah like dude my best video it got 1.2 million views it was eight seconds long i didn't talk it was me working out and i had a fucking controversial headline and i had people fighting it it was um i wish i knew this earlier and then i had like a viral sound on it it was eight seconds long and uh the drop of like the the sound I switched scenes and then it said four by 12 is killing your games. E. Yeah. So, and then I, I said like caption below and I had like a little arrow pointing to the caption knowing no one reads the caption. Like I know people can't even read in this country. So I was like, they're not going to read this. Everyone's fighting in the caption. They're like four by, I'm glad I do four by 13 and like shit like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, it was funny because the more people hate comment on your post, the more people who agree or disagree or fight them back. The more you, dude, the more you get pushed out. It's like, yeah, thousand percent. Yeah, we see that sometimes. Yeah, we have we had people like uncollab with us, guests that have uncollabed with us because of hate Some comments. Hate. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, like this is like algorithm, know, bro. Even Take as it. a podcast, like because you know that person was a fellow podcaster, right? But I'm like. Yo, we're a podcast, you're a podcast, neither of us are famous. We're all fighting, right? Like, we're not, like, a famous person that started a podcast. We're out here, nobodies, just trying to sell content, right? So it's like, who? if, if people are hating, that's good, you know? Because, like, yeah. cool, you got 100 shitty comments, but you got 700 likes, right? Like, there's 700 more, you know, 600 more people... That say, I, I like this one. I like this one. You know, and it's like, it's pushing your shit out. Like, a lot of people can't see that. And that's where... One, one thing I will say, though, is that, that I know what you're talking about. There was not one positive comment in there. No. <laughs> it was very bad. It was we, very we, painful. We were the ones that were like, okay, guys, let's play nice in here. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was bad. But still, it pushes shit. That's totally yeah. true. And that's it's, okay, though, because yeah. we, we've got called so many fucking things, and that shit's just hilarious. Yeah, bro. but even with your world, right? It's like... I could actually show you why 4x12 is not the way to do it, but that doesn't make a good clip. I'd rather present this. Yeah. I'd rather be like, I wish I knew this earlier. 4x12 is killing your games. 
obviously, if you had a 20-minute, th- 10-minute conversation with me, I could tell you exactly why, and you'll understand me. Mm-hmm. But that's not why I'm on Instagram. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's not why, yeah. you, that's not why you, you know, you got 100 or so people commenting in, you know, and, on your reel. And the funniest thing is, the people that were probably talking shit to you, it's like, okay, take your show off and stand next to me and see what's up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they can't see their fucking their toes. Exactly. Nah, but yeah. For real though, take your shirt off. <laughs> no, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just playing. All right, fitness though, fitness gem. What's the fitness, fitness gem? Because you just dropped one with the four by four by four by twelves are killing your game. Yeah, I'm done with that. I'm doing. I'm doing uh, what? Ten twenty by four. Uh, we're doing uh one cc trend. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, Three five hundred milligram test. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, straighten the eyeball. <laughs> um, I would say the best fitness gem, just like it's not sexy at all, at all. It's fucking just consistency and just lift heavier shit. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, depending yeah. on what your goal is, man. It's like keep doing it. Yeah, this, yeah. I don't wake up every day and like look forward to going to the gym. Honestly, like most days, I it's like a nuisance for me at this point. Mm-hmm. But it's like it doesn't matter. You still got to do it. Like you want the body, do the fucking work. Yeah. If you don't want the body, don't do the work. No yeah. one's t- no one's forcing you to do it, and that's why like I hate when people say I don't have time for this, I don't have time for that. It's like you know what, you don't make yourself have time for it. Mm-hmm. You don't have time for the shit you don't want. Mm-hmm. So it's like just stay consistent. If you don't want it, just tell us. Stop saying you want to lose twenty pounds. It's like you don't because if you did, you would. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. really all it is. Yeah, and part of it too is like uh, dealing with it, getting the discipline until it becomes part of the routine, and then you feel like you're missing something when you don't go to the gym or something. You know, like it becomes yeah. a mental like out, you know, whatever. Uh, my other thing was there's been a trend at work. Some dudes are losing some weight. I love it. But what was interesting and was cool about this podcast right now is uh, I they were telling me like different ways that they did it. There's like three different people lost mad weight. And I kind of asked them how they did it or whatever. So, you know, what do you think is the best? And obviously it's per person, but, uh, keto fast, like, uh, intermittent fasting or whatever the case is. Right. And then working out like a motherfucker. I guarantee if you do crack, you lose weight faster than anybody. <laughs> or at <Adderall>. all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what, what do you, what do you suggest when somebody's trying to lose weight? Cut carbs and calories. <laughs> I've done keto. I've done intermittent fasting. I've done them both at the same time. Oof. Oh, here? Yeah. That's tough, okay. bro. Um, I've done both at the same time. While I was deployed down in Miami, actually. You're just um, eating that Latina sucks. culo. <laughs> <laughs> He's he straight Latino hey, cool. Shout out to your girl, Connor. She's a good girl, bro. <laughs> we love her. Yeah, yeah. That was. <laughs> um, Move on. I did both. I, I, dude, I did both at the same time. Like, I got fucking shredded. Uh, the problem was, it sucked and I hated my life. So I stopped doing it and then the results went away. So, like, the best diet, the best routine is something. It's not something that get your results quick. It's something that you can do your whole life. Yeah. Because, like, because, dude, and that's the that's the beauty about online training is you work with people who do these fad diets, who do intermittent fasting, do keto. It's like I talk to people all the time or I did in my fitness business. They're like, oh, yeah, I did keto. It worked really well. I just have to do it again. If it worked so well the first time, why do you have to do it again? Yeah, because you don't Cause like, like it. If it works, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that it's not for me. No, yeah. You like carbs. Yeah, like Dude, I love carbs. You kidding me? I had Chinese food like, like earlier tonight. Hell yeah, I like carbs. Right. But like other people for their health reasons, like type two diabetics, keto's a great yeah. diet for them to follow. It doesn't yeah. raise their insulin, like it's perfect. For me, I like pasta. I'm not doing it. Yeah. So like it work some people love it. Like fuck if you can do it forever, do it. Yeah. If do something that you like and you, and you enjoy. Because if you find a diet that you can cheat on every day and still get your results, that's the perfect diet. And that looks different for everyone you talk to. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think, like, I I completely agree with you. There's something with me where I don't like doing things unless I could. I feel like I could do it for a long time. Like, if it's yeah. a podcast, it's like, let's not bullshit unless we feel like we could do this weekly. 
or something like that. If it's a workout regimen, it's like I don't want to I don't want to like force myself to do four hours a, a day and shit like that for what? Because I am not sustaining that. Like that's just something with my personality. But that's also why I think uh, intermittent fasting is a good diet because you don't have to do. I'm only eating two hours a day. Like that's my window, right? Like you could literally say. I'm I'm gonna eat within eight hours. I think that's very like doable. Like that's not hard. Like I don't eat after uh, seven p.m. You know what I mean? But I can eat pasta. I can eat this or that. Obviously, if you're gorging yourself, that's not good. But literally, not eating after eight o'clock or seven o'clock is like huge for your metabolism and and all that stuff. And that's very doable. You know, keto for me is hard because it's like like you were saying. I like pasta. Like fam, I can't do keto because if my girl wants to go to Freaking Olive Garden or some shit like that. Like, I can't. Not just that, but you did Latina, bro. That's rice and beans. Rice and beans, two carbs every meal, bro. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, a thousand percent. So, I think you answered my question. Intermittent fashion is the best, man. Fuck keto. (laughs) Even though Zach's mom is like a super keto head. Yeah, she's like a keto coach. Yeah, Yeah. she loves that shit. Dude, intermittent fasting. Because I was was so, I was like so interested in the keto. I was like looking on YouTube, diving into the science. I was like... This all makes so much sense. I did it, and I was like, I want to die. <laughs> yeah. I want to die. It's hot as shit here in Miami. Like, it's, I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, hey, when you're ketogenic, God. yeah. Yeah, man. Well, shit, bro. What's up? Wait, you got anything else you want to get off, man? That was, like, that was perfect, man. We don't want to be another WOT on the calendar. You know what no, I'm no, saying? Yo, go. I'm yeah. using that, bro. I'm going to start scheduling meetings at work, and I'll be like, yo, this is WOT. I got three WOTs today, and then I got another thing or whatever. Like, that's fire. I'm stealing that from you, bro. <laughs> three watts. Three watts. Um, watts and thoughts. What? <laughs> I'm just playing, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think that was solid. I really don't know what else we can talk about. Um, you guys, How long have you guys been down in... Uh, 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 a whole well, life, bro. I mean, most of our lives. I think I feel like we grew up here, even though like we were born in other places, yeah, or whatever. But we've been out here for a long time. I moved man. to Florida when I was five. Yeah, but like starting this podcast, like we started this podcast about you know almost three years ago, almost man. three years ago or whatever. Wow. And uh, like having people like you is super dope because um, not everybody likes to talk about the money, right? But this is Pocket Watch Podcast, so. Those, you know, when we could we could get some gems, we could get some game about like how do you get 10k a month? How do you turn that into 13, you know, 30k a month? And it always starts with the I took out a sixteen thousand dollar loan. It always starts with the you know st- shit like that. And it it always starts with COVID for some reason. <laughs> recently. Yeah, that's like a trend that we have. Everybody that we've yeah. had like lately that has uh, obtained success, it's always oh during COVID, you know. Yeah, yeah bro. But that that's, you want a headline for the 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 fucking podcast. Clip this. I'm glad COVID happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the fucking headline. Let's go. <laughs> bro, a lot of people, man, I don't know, bro. It's hard. There's mixed mixed opinions on it. But, like, I, I've i definitely met more people glad that COVID happened than not. Right? I mean, th- on this podcast, that's the Come up season. Shit. Yeah. I was happy COVID it, happened when it happened. Life, <laughs> life is weird, man. Things that seem bad right now end up being probably the best thing that ever happened to you but things that are good right now might be the worst things for you yeah so i mean it, it, it takes a long time to really see that and again experience if you don't have the experience you just don't know yeah mm-hmm. um like i know people affected by obviously covid i know people who died with covid but it's like you know like what you can't you can't predict life and i think that's the beautiful thing but it's also terrifying yeah. So I think if you're not able to take a chance on yourself, it's like, why yeah, even be here? Yeah. Take a chance, bro. But all right, man. Connor, thank you for joining us, bro. Go get to the calls. Go get to the money, man. Let them know. We'll uh, we'll keep in touch with you. We'll let you know about the episode, bro. Man, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, again, guys, thank you for tuning in. Check Connor's uh, information down below. Tune in with him. Great follow. Uh, if you want to tap in and start being a fitness coach and whatever the case is, go ahead. Uh, make sure you like, follow, share, subscribe. Tell your mother. Tell your puppy. Tell your, your sister. Yeah, man. Tell Connor. Tell Connor's mom. Hey, Connor's mom. I'm not playing that. <laughs> <laughs> Her name's Karen. Like, no joke. Her name's Karen. Hey, Karen. <laughs>
care. That's my mom. Chill, bro. All right, guys. Pocket watch out. Out. out.